欢迎收睇《六音闯荡》，眨下眼圣诞假期就咁就过咗去啦。不过仲有几日，我哋先同二零一九年讲拜拜嘅。今年啊，的而且确经历咗唔少事，希望出年二零二零年有个新开始啦。喺迎接新开始之前啊，二零一九年仲有最后一个星期日嘅赛马日噶，不如即刻睇下马坛热话 Top Five， 一齐 update 下马坛嘅最新动态先啦。Number Five。苗礼德马房嘅建集骑师王俊，上季获得三十八场头马，居于骑师榜第六位，表现相当出色。可惜喺五月尾神操嘅时候，佢俾马匹撞到受伤，而经过超过半年嘅休养，最近王俊已经恢复翻简单嘅拆骑啦。希望佢可以早日康复，大家尽快喺录音场上见到佢啦。Number four， 马季过咗三分之一。喺骑师榜上面，莫雷拉同潘顿嘅成绩已经开始抛离其他对手，头马数目遥遥领先。反观榜尾骑师，就有今季新加盟嘅希威森、苏迪雄，以及将会喺一月离开香港嘅澳洲骑师贝力斯。至于练马师方面，临近年尾，姚本辉马房越战越勇，成绩稳居练马师榜榜首。而榜尾方面，就有郑俊伟、何亮。杨天鹏等等，其实马房今季有唔少参战马跑入亚军，似乎只系欠缺小许运气。希望踏入二零二零年，佢哋嘅成绩能够稳步上扬啦。Number three， 二零一九年最后一场级制赛将会喺星期日上演。呢场一千米国际三级赛，杨子京短途锦标，有唔少高分马参战。其中嚟自姚本辉马房嘅征辉，上季爆冷胜出赛事，今年呢匹八岁马将会再度参赛，力求卫冕。不过嚟自沈集成马房嘅帝豪福星亦不能忽视，呢匹短途新星被评一百一十一分，今季复出一战，喺潘顿胯下轻松赢出第一班千二米赛事，取得跨季四连捷。虽然上将喺香港短途锦标，面对一众国际级恶马，只能跑第十二名。但今次喺对手大幅减弱下，你匹四岁马有冇机会取得首项级制赛冠军呢 ？Number two， 下星期嘅快活谷野赛将会休战一次，而到一月八号就会正式翻嚟噶啦。当晚跑马地马场里面会举行以潮流服饰为主题嘅派对，各位穿搭达人不妨着得靓啲，向大家展示一下自己嘅品味触觉。Number one， 下星期就到二零二零年啦，而迎接新嘅一年，当然要去行个靓运啦。一月一号元旦日，沙田马场将会举行好运一月一赛马日，艺人冯盈盈、洪永成会亲临现场同各位见面，将好运送俾大家。除此之外，场内仲有多款期间限定嘅应节美食俾大家食出好运。而赛事方面，梗系唔少得千四米国际三级赛华商会挑战杯啦！有运行，有嘢食，有马睇，仲可以见到新骑师彭国连客串，正啊！哇，咁快二零一九年已经嚟到尾声啦！讲到今年最难忘嘅赛事，一定要数到浪琴标香港国际赛事啊！冇错啦，其实我觉得四场嘅国际赛事都非常精彩啦，特别系香港杯同埋香港短途锦标啊！事关啦，两匹头马胜出光彩同埋争分夺秒，都系以短距离去取胜，真系睇得好过瘾嘅。我哋睇嘅就系梗系过瘾啦，但系如果上阵嗰系你嘅话，就要兼顾好多嘢啦。嗱，咁我就唔知上阵嗰个点睇啦，不过跟住落嚟睇下佢访问咧就知道噶啦。事关咧，雷神咧当日咧其实系施展咗神级嘅骑功去赢出佢嘅香港平同埋香港短途锦标嘅，一齐睇下。Joe, let's look at the Hong Kong Vars. Together, a race you've won before for Japan on Satono Crown. At this time, you're on Glory Vars. You hadn't ridden him before, but you did ride him in track work going into the race. What were your sort of confidence levels like on his national day with him? I was quite confident about him, and I was pretty much saying that to the public. Uh, and obviously, it was all about the feeling he gave me on his track work. 
on Thursday. Uh, when I was on him on that day, he was just so professional. He was so nice underneath for me that I just could not see him not performing very well and not being competitive. And luckily I was, I was right about that. He, did, he delivered the races. He did indeed. Let's have a look at how he did it. You draw barrier number seven, you've got true self to your inside in gate six. Did you use her to sort of guide you towards the inside? I honestly thought I was going to be able to be in front of her, of him, and actually, as he was going straight to the fence, I was more than happy to just sit next, next to it and hope that my horse gets relaxed and switch it off underneath me, which pretty much was the case. Uh, I had a little bit of a concern on regards how he was going to travel because his last start in Japan, he was actually a little bit too keen for his jockey. And, but fortunately at this time, he just switched off underneath very well and showed, showed the world what he's capable of. Along the back section of the track, Exultant was in front. He slowed the tempo down with Zach Burton on board. Was that an issue at all, the pace of the race? When the pace is slowed down a little bit, um, everyone else started to get a little bit uncomfortable be behind. And yes, I was a bit concerned on regards to the section of the race because we all know Exalting is a champion, he's, he's, a, he's a star in Hong Kong, and if he was able to keep on going that way for, for long, uh, he was going to be hard to beat, to get beaten. So, fortunately, some other horse, some other jockeys start to make a move and start putting on pressure, and from the 700 meters ahead, the race start to build, and uh, everyone else start to really start coming. 500 meters to go, I was in a trap. I was having a horse building underneath. And it's amazing how this horse knew there was a very crucial point of the race that he started to build up his, his, own, his own strength and wanting to go and unfortunately was locked up behind horses and hoping that we could get a split. And fortunately, and thanks God that the split came and once the gap appears, he just jumped in there. And from there on, I knew he was gonna win and win impressively because he, he was full on and coming strongly and having a clear run. So, what amazing perform of a very, very nice horse. So once you get to Exultant here, 200 meters left to go, you go past him, there's nothing down the outside that's a threat. When you've got a big group one race like this and you know you're going to win so far from home, what's going through your mind? I had a lot of things. Uh, the that I will definitely never forget is that I, I point to the inside camera and I, I said to, to them who probably could read my lips would understand that I said, I told you all that he was coming to win. And the feeling of it to be able to win such a big race with such a nice horse is just incredible. I'm looking at the Hong Kong sprint, you're on beat the clock course we'd won two group ones for you the season before but all the talk was on a zero leading into the race did you feel like your horse had flown below the radar a little uh i think they were kind of underestimating him a little bit probably because uh he has had only one run for the season and was a good run but not an eye catching but what he was able to produce when it came to the to the big day was outstanding and he was showing to the world what he's, what he's got. Very talented horse. He is indeed. Let's have a look together at how it all unfolded. You jump from barrier three. He wasn't the quickest away, but soon enough you managed to get onto the rails, settle midfield. After they completed the first couple of hundred metres of the race, were you happy with your position in the run? He, he didn't break very well because he was kind of jig jogging inside of the gate. When the gate's open, he kind of uh, jumped a little bit up in the air, putting himself behind a few horses, but he ended up being in a very good position, three back on the fence, genuine pace behind the good horses, horse that was always going to take him forward. And obviously when we passed halfway through the, the corner, I was extremely happy to be where I was. Were you worried though coming towards the corner that you're back on the fence? Were you worried that you might get boxed in there? Uh, we would always be worried, but sometimes we have to take a chance. And then obviously this is a very good example of uh, sometimes it pays off. You know? Uh, good horse can overcome tough situations and he seems to be one of them. Here at the top of the straight, you've got a choice to make. Do you go inside or outside of Mr. Stunning? 
Why did you decide to go to the outside? Well, the, clear, the, the run was available. Um, he would always get a clearer run over there. If, even if Mr. Sun moved around, I could always skip away from him. On the inside, if I gamble in there and Mr. Sunny actually hands me a little bit, that would, might put me in a very bad spot. So if there is two options, inside or outside in a clear run, I would always go to the outside, um, if that was the case. Once I pop him on the outside, he, he dashes home and 100 meters to go, I knew he was going to be the winner. He's a good horse, he tries his best always. Do what he's done, very, very few horses can do. Being on the top three in 21, 20, more than 21 races, so, and being his rider is such a pleasure. Uh, size has done more than enough to deserve to be winning those big races, and um, I'm very proud and pleased to be associated to one good horse that he had that was able to make it. 雷神喺今年嘅國際賽日啊，即係大豐收啊，贏到兩冠一亞嘅好成績。希望佢今季繼續士氣如虹啊！嗱，其實除咗雷神之外咧，我覺得另一位今年成績非常之好嘅就係本地華將 Vincent 何澤耀啦。你睇到佢呢幾年啊，都一直進步噶啦。今年佢更加喺香港杯攞到個季軍，成績有目共睹，真係見得人㗎。咁啊，真係英雄所見略同啦。講緊就係你啦，同埋下 part 嘅嘉賓啊，沈國成啊，佢同你一樣好欣賞本地騎練㗎。轉頭翻嚟聽下佢點講啦。